So you have replaced your DualSense controllers, joystick module, or potentiometers, and it's not working. Let's see if we can find the problem. First, you are going to need a multimeter for this. I'm going to use this one as an example. This is a low-cost meter, runs around $35, and I'm going to be using an extra test lead kit, which runs around $15. The extra clips in the add-on test lead kit will make the multimeter user experience much more enjoyable, worth way more than the $15 to $20 you will spend on them. Problems that arise after replacing the joystick module or just the potentiometers, I'm going to separate into two categories. The first category I'm not really going to deal with in this video, the problem of the joystick still drifting, either the same axis or a different axis. While a problem, it is not something that was likely caused by the replacement procedure. It's more than likely that one of the potentiometers is just too far off in value compared to the one it's replacing. These are not precision potentiometers in these joysticks, so if the original is off in one direction and the replacement is off in the other direction, there is a possibility that is going to cause a too far off center problem. Just about the only solution for that is to replace that potentiometer and try again. There are some measurements that can be taken to assist in finding a closer replacement, but that will have to be a video of its own. The category problems I'm going to deal with in this video are the major joystick axis problems, like no response on an axis when the stick is moved, one or both axes stuck to one extreme or the other. Basically, something is very wrong now that wasn't wrong before the joystick was replaced. We're going to need to power up the DualSense mainboard. I will connect the battery. Once the battery is connected, you want to be careful not to short anything out on the PC board. Then I will connect the USB to the computer with the Gamepad Tester web page up and press in on one of the joysticks to trigger the L3 or R3 switch, which should turn on the controller. If the controller will not power up, then there is either a short somewhere or maybe a wire has pulled loose on the battery connector. Now we will need the meter set to measure DC volts, which is the mode this meter starts in when the knob is turned to the first position. A good location for the common or negative lead is the joystick frame. Either one will do, but use the frame of the one you are not working on. The common or ground pin on the joystick potentiometers are here and here. They should read very near zero volts. There is quite a bit of PC board trace connecting these pins. Of the potentiometer pins, they are the most difficult to unsolder, and that's because of all the added copper traces connected to them. At the same time, they should be the most difficult to damage. But if either of these pins do not read near zero volts, almost assuredly the PC board has been damaged. All is not lost though. You can solder a jumper wire from the pin to one of the joystick frame pins. There are a lot of common slash ground locations you can connect to. The voltage supply for the left right potentiometer is this pin here, and it should be close to 1.8 volts. The supply for the up down potentiometer is this pin and it should read the same 1.8 volts. These two pins are connected together by a trace on the PC board. Where those traces are will depend on the version of the controller. If the other joystick is working and either or both of the 1.8 volts is missing, then there is going to be damage to a trace going to these pins. Again, not all is lost. It is possible to find and fix the PC board trace where it is damaged. Or, worst case, run a small wire from the 1.8 volts from one of the other joystick's supply pins. Now if the 1.8 volts is missing from both pins on both joysticks, well I doubt the joystick will even power up as there is probably a short on the 1.8 volt rail. And you'll have to find where that short is and remove it. Could be as simple as a splash of sorter across a couple of pins. It can also take a very long time to find something like that. But the power management I see in the thing should protect itself from shorts. So if you can find the short, should be good to go once it's removed. If everything looks like it should at this point, we are down to just a few possibilities left. So let's measure the center pin on the potentiometer for the axis that's giving us trouble. In a perfect world, it should read one half of the 1.8 volt supply voltage. Though these are not perfect potentiometers, the voltage is not too far away from 0.9 volts. The voltage should change when the joystick is moved. This potentiometer is the left-right axis, so when the joystick is moved to the left, the voltage should drop to close to zero volts and when moved to the right, it should get close to 1.8 volts. For the up and down axis, up is near zero volts and down is close to 1.8 volts. So that is how the potentiometer center pin should read. And if it does, then we're really down to two possibilities. 
the trace from the center pin is damaged and the voltage is not getting back to the processor, or the processor's input for the axis is damaged. If it's the latter, I would say the controller is done for. Probably a static discharge from replacing the potentiometer has damaged the input, and a new controller is going to be the most cost-effective fix. But to determine which is the case, we're going to have to follow along the PC board trace to find a location we can test at. So at this point you will want to remove the USB cable and disconnect the battery. Each pin's path for the PC board trace will differ depending on the version of the controller. Here's a bottom view of the right joystick and this is a BDM-020 PC board. So following this potentiometer center pin will take me to this via here. You will need to scrape the coating off this via to reach the copper trace underneath. Don't overdo the scraping. Just want to remove the green sorter mask and it's very thin. Now you will need to put the meter in resistance mode. For this meter it's this position here. The omega symbol should be just about standard for all multimeters. The probes are not touching and can see the meter display is showing a capital M omega, meaning the meter is in the mega ohms range. The value is showing overload as the resistance between the probes is larger than the meter can read. Now when the probes are placed on the supply pins for the potentiometers, which are connected together, the meter display will step down in range till we are just in the ohm range and can see the value is below 1 ohm. So for this test we want one probe on the via here with the solder mask scraped off and the other probe on the pin of the potentiometer here. If it reads anything over say a few tens of ohms, then the trace is damaged, which is great, you have found the problem and it is fixable. Can either find where the trace is damaged and repair it, or can run a thin insulated wire from the potentiometer's pin to the via. If it reads near zero ohms, then it's going to be a processor problem and the controller is toast. But what if our voltage at the center pin of the potentiometer is not reading the way it should? Could be stuck at zero volts or maybe 1.8 volts or somewhere in between. What we want to do is measure the resistance from the center pin of the potentiometer to the outer pins. Should be somewhere close to 1k ohm in value. Can compare all four potentiometers and see. They should all read about the same. Now if the bad axis is reading a much higher value, and by much higher I'm talking about 5k ohms and up, more than likely the potentiometer is defective. That's why I always like to check the value of the potentiometers before I install them. Of course, soldering in the potentiometer could end up damaging it always that possibility. A much lower reading and there's going to be something shorted. I would remove the potentiometer and recheck the center pad's resistance value to the outer two pads. If the value is still low, look very closely and make sure no sorter is bridging anything it shouldn't. Might even have to remove the entire joystick to make sure. If no sorter can be found shorting out the center pad, then probably static discharge has damaged the processor input and might as well use the controller for parts. If the value goes way up when the potentiometer is removed, then probably have a defective potentiometer and can just replace it. One of the problems I previously mentioned was a defective input to the processor IC. About the only way that gets damaged from replacing a joystick or potentiometers is by electrostatic discharge. If you're in an environment where you've ever walked across the floor and felt a shock when touching something, you are a danger to any electronic circuit. I would recommend looking up ESD protection methods as there are some simple things you can do to try and limit the danger to the circuit you are working on. Thank you for watching.